Good morning. Good morning. Good. This is my presentation on cartridges versus disks and how the formats have changed over the years they've been implemented in technology. So, in the digital age, two storage formats have really been prevalent in both uh, private and commercial usage. You have the cartridges, which have been around since pretty much the inception of the computer itself, and are, are kind of a more physical media. And on the other hand, you have optical discs, which are, which are more about uh, scanning the data using lights. And these two have been in a constant power battle of sorts for which one is the dominant format. Firstly, you have cartridges. Here's the NES cartridge for visual cue. Uh, they come in various types, such as tape cartridges, which use mag magnetic tape. And you might have seen them in VHSs or cassette tapes for their use. And on the other hand, you have uh, flash or ROM or RAM media, uh, media which uses a more hardware-based uh, chipset and hooks right into the computer itself. And the, and the first cartridge that was really developed was the uh, magnetic storage unit used in the Univac 1. 1951. Uh, when you think of cartridges, you probably think of their durability. A lot of them are infamous for being able to uh, take a beating and even still keep, keep on ticking. But there is a cost to that, and that is that uh, cartridge memory is a lot more expensive to create and develop for. So, let's take a closer look at a few cartridge form forms that have been used in uh, video games. shapes and sizes, both for console and handheld devices. But next, we have optical discs, the good old CD. They were originally developed in 1968 in the laser disc format, which, as you might expect, used laser technology to read the contents. Now, this first implementation, funnily enough, was not actually very viable in its time. It was taught, it was pretty much too expensive for consumers to get on board with it, and it very quickly flopped. But, you know how it is with technology. Failed experiments often lead to some of the most successful uh, pieces of technology we've ever seen. And this would certainly be the case with the optical disc, as formats such as the CD-ROM, the DVD, and Blu-ray would refine this technology and make it more accessible and viable as a storage medium. This 
tech, this format grows in popularity among manufacturers and developers due to cheap costs and, at least at the time of their introduction, much higher storage capability than a cartridge could ever have. So, with, with kind of the basic idea of what these two technologies can do, uh, it's worth looking at three different mediums to see how they rose to prominence in commercial use. For example, in music media, uh, both storages were used at different points. Uh, the first music storage media that was commercially available, you might know this, is the vinyl record. You put it on, put the needle on, and you're listening to good old show tunes. Uh, but eventually, things got a bit too cumbersome for that to work. And eventually, music started selling albums on cassette tapes. Fit in the palm of your hand and use the aforementioned magnetic tape to work. These were made in 1965, or made accessible in 1965 or 1966, which depends on the region. They actually rose to prominence in Europe first, before America. But eventually CDs kind of completely wiped cassette tapes off the map. Their storage was way better, and the audio quality was far and away the superior option. Uh, CDs would basically be the dominant music media for years, at least until the digital age where stores such as iTunes or Amazon Play took over buying music. So, next up is the film industry, and this is fun. The first commercially uh, accessible data storage was the VHS, which again used tape to store data upon it. Uh, the, this technology came into commercial use for the, in the 1970s and was used for a quarter of a century until 1997, where the DVD format was formally introduced. These held way better quality film on it. Higher audio quality, higher video quality, higher storage capacity, which meant you could get things like bonus features, like deleted scenes or director commentary tracks. It was quite innovative. And as you might imagine, it very quickly drove VHS tapes extinct to an extent. And so later on, actually, Blu-rays would soon do the same to DVDs because they came out and were far, far better in terms of how they stored movies because the technology involved with a Blu-ray actually allows for higher wavelength uh, laser light than a DVD which used red light. But around the same time as Blu-rays in 2005, there was another format that tried to compete with it directly and that was the DVD HD. Uh, if you haven't heard of it, it's because it didn't last very long and very quickly bit the dust compared to Blu-ray. And even now today, Blu-rays are pretty commonly used for film distribution. But you still see DVDs sometimes for lower, lower class people to buy movies. Wins. The alternative is to have two or more competing standards that don't work with each other, making them more expensive to develop and get adopted, raising the potential for all of that development money to go to waste, and posing the risk to consumers that the new technologies they buy will be out of date if they choose the wrong side. One of the most recent stories of a largely preventable standards clash is the war over the two high-definition optical formats, Blu-ray and HD DVD. As the 90s were coming to a close, HD TVs were beginning to become a viable market. Prices were going down, TVs were getting larger, but there wasn't very much content to watch in HD. Movies were either on VHS, analog stored 480p, or DVDs, digitally stored 480p, both standard definition. 
but except for a few unpopular tape-based formats, nothing was available to make full use of the sharper picture that HDTVs offered. The first step to the solution arrived when a man named Shuji Nakamura developed a commercially practical blue laser diode. With optical media like CDs and DVDs, wavelength of the laser being used determines the amount of data that can be stored. The thinner the wavelength, the more data can be compressed into the same space. That's why DVDs with a 650 nanometer wavelength can hold more data than CDs with a 780 nanometer wavelength. So, to increase the storage on a disk more, the wavelength had to be pushed even shorter from red light to blue. With the blue laser diode ready to be used in optical media, tech companies got to work on creating a format to put HD content on the disc. Sony and Philips started the ultra-density optical and DVR blue projects. But their early prototypes for what they called Blu-ray discs weren't appealing to the DVD4, a group of companies who managed the DVD's format standardization, since they needed a plastic caddy to hold the disc that would drive up the manufacturing costs. The DVD forum decided to make its own blue laser format, which it eventually adopted from Toshiba and NEC. It was originally called Advanced Optical Storage, but quickly got renamed to HD DVD. Conflicting formats are bad for everyone, and the companies behind both optical discs knew that. DVDs were able to avoid that problem by having all companies agree on one standard. So in attempts to prevent the war, both the DVD forum and the Blu-ray Association attempted to compromise on one format in early 2005. Some of the main points of issue were the physical design of the disc and the software platform for interactive content, either BDJ for Blu-rays or HDI for HD DVDs. Bill Gates himself argued that Blu-rays wouldn't work as smoothly on personal computers, and shortly afterward, Microsoft and Intel both announced their support for HD DVD. HP tried to form a compromise by suggesting running HDI on the Blu-ray disc format and threatened to support HD DVD otherwise. The Blu-ray Association disregarded the suggestion, and negotiations came to a close. It was time for the formats to go to war, and let consumers decide what disc would be the future of home video. Before the release of both technologies, the war was still anyone's game. Each format had three of the big six movie producers. Over time, the Blu-ray features began to attract some companies, like Warner Bros. and Paramount, but Paramount soon stepped back to exclusive support of HD DVD. The lack of exclusive support for HD DVD by movie studios prompted retailers to back away from the format. Both Blockbuster, yep, yeah, they were still a thing back then, and Target began to focus primarily on Blu-ray. Warner Brothers soon followed suit the next year, after originally publishing to both formats. With this dropping support for HD DVD, the end was becoming apparent to Toshiba. In a last-ditch effort to push the format, they drastically reduced the price of their HD DVD player to almost half what it was originally being sold for. The move tanked, and not long after, Best Buy and Walmart, the largest vendor of DVDs, both announced they soon would be dropping support for HD DVD. Within four days, Toshiba too announced they would stop selling, developing, and manufacturing HD DVD, essentially bringing an end to the war. The remaining companies after Toshiba jumped ship didn't take long to do the same. Microsoft stopped producing their HD DVD add-on for the Xbox 360, and the last two of the big six studios, Universal and Paramount, joined the Blu-ray camp. Quite a story, indeed. But that's nothing compared to the last media uh, genre, I guess you could call it, video games. Because by now, you might have noticed a pattern with uh, disc formats pretty much replacing cartridges outright in various medias. And for video games, this actually turned out to be the case for a fair while. Uh, so. Cartridges were pretty much always used since the Atari 2600 and its competitors were in business in the 70s. And that continued for Nintendo and Sega, the biggest competitors, going into the late 80s to early 90s. However, around uh, 94 and 95, a lot of companies started to test the idea of using disk systems, such as the Sega CD or the Philips CDI. But it was Sony that broke through the glass ceiling of sorts with the PlayStation, which used CD-ROMs which held 700 megabytes of data on its disk. This absolutely trumped any single cartridge-based format by a country mile. It wasn't even close. So. 
this kind of became evident that it was the much more preferable option for developers of software to make their games on because it allowed them much more creative freedom. It allowed them to push the envelope with their design, both in 3D and in full motion video cutscenes, and allowed them far more audio, well, far more and far cleaner audio tracks than any cartridge could hold on it. So full voice acting began to become a very prominent thing. However, this enhanced format did not come without its costs because discs could not actually save any uh, data on it. So if you wanted to, say, uh, save your progress in Castlevania Symphony of the Night, you, you couldn't just go to a save point and your progress would, wouldn't be recorded to the disc. Your only option then was to buy a secondary memory card to put into your PlayStation so that you could access the save data. Otherwise, a lot of early developers used a password system to circumvent that. So, there's more. One of the disk format's biggest problems, uh, which still goes on to this day, is load times. As you might imagine, disks are a moving, fo moving structure in how they read data. They, it uses a system of analyzing lights, moving parts within the system, and reading that data takes some time. So, loading was very bad in the early, in the early iterations of it. In this regard, cartridges on the Nintendo 64 actually had something of an advantage because they could instantly load up the game and start right up and it would always save your data right to the cartridge so there was no need to buy an extra memory card which could run up pretty expensively as well and there was no system noise involved with a cartridge you might you might remember early CD stuff how and its uh, infamous noise of when it was reading a disc very uh, particularly. Uh, however, these disadvantages didn't outweigh the positives of discs, and they quickly became the dominant uh, format for two decades of the industry. Starting with the PlayStation 2, everyone would be on board with discs in the home market. However, in the handheld gaming scene, things were a little different. Discs weren't exactly practical in a hand console due to the aforementioned problems. Now, imagine holding something that moves as much as a disc reader does in the palm of your hand. That thing built, that device builds heat, and heat makes things very uncomfortable to hold. In this regard, the PlayStation Portable, which was designed to compete with and toss out Nintendo DS, actually failed to gain a, gain a significant foothold in the handheld industry, and cartridges proved to be the dominant format of handhelds. That's be it also helped that cartridges in this, in this time where they weren't used in home consoles, they were significantly improved in terms of data storage. They could hold much more and in much smaller sizes due to advancements in flash memory. Uh, and as for this little thing right here, the UMD, oh boy, it was not the, it was not the best. Uh, some of the games on the PlayStation Portable could actually take up to five minutes to load just one menu. It was not, not great. So, with that said, where are we now in our, in this war? Well, games have been getting bigger and bigger. You may have noticed the definition is near lifelike. The 
quality and scope of the worlds are much bigger. The sound quality is superb. But it's all becoming too much for discs. The limitations of disc storage are becoming more and more evident as they're not advancing past the Blu-ray format significantly. And in a sense, discs have actually become something more like keys for access to a game. You put it in your console and they do a massive download to your hard drive of the system in order to play Grand Theft Auto V or something of the like. Now, there's another console, the Nintendo Switch, which has been using cartridges for itself as a home console, and its, its storage capacity and speed are actually becoming something, something that could actually give discs a run for its money. But this is still a relatively new thing, and we're not entirely sure where that will end up in the future. So for now, the two mediums, well, discs probably have the slight edge, but, but cartridges are very quickly catching up and are something to look, look forward to seeing in the future. And that concludes my presentation.